goodness. Can't even see my face. That's a little bit better. How's it going, everybody? Um, let me know if the wind is a problem. Because I got to tell you, it is unbelievably windy out here. And as soon as I start broadcasting, here comes the wind. And there was no wind when I got set up here. And then I sat down and started. And I said, well, I need to leave and uh, go to the car. But that's a bit uncomfortable. But anyway, so we're going to try it here and see how it works. Um, back outside again. How's everybody doing? All right. So there's Alan Kutza and Nick Muller's here. Welcome to both of you. And I'm going to gravitate back and forth between sunglasses because you know it's not sunny but it's just that right sort of squinty sort of stuff and I'll put these on I think you can read the text on the screen like this uh, mostly welcome to the awesome weekend well thank you is that is that Debbie yeah well I hope you have an awesome weekend I don't know if I'm gonna have an awesome weekend I'll certainly give it a try but welcome back to the program folks so listen let me just be up front with this right now for just a handful of you that are here 11 folks um, what's that that's uh Okay, let me go back to the reading glasses because I can't see as well. There we go. All right, so who was that? Oh, that was Lorraine. Hey, Lorraine, how's it going? Oh, it, Lorraine. Hey. Whoop. Heck, whoop. It's going well for you. Fuck this whoop. What is hope, folks? Well, hope and change. Yep. Hey, Menage a Trois, welcome back to the campaign and meet and greet. Oh, the meet and greet went well from my perspective. This was just more a um, meet the candidates, and they didn't want us to talk about politics, although couple of my opponents did that they wanted us to tell us a little bit about them ourselves and so I talked about you know my interest in genealogy and good evening Dylan and also you know my beekeeping experience and how I got to do it for the first time in Africa and I lived all the country that sort of thing so that was interesting but uh, yeah it went well but I discovered yet more nonsense about one of my opponents last night boy one of my opponents is absolutely back crap desperate to win this election and um, even willing to stretch the truth and tell fairy tales about other candidates and I'll leave it at that Oh man, listen, now suddenly I'm in freaking Kansas. It's like a hurricane's coming. You know that way? Okay, seriously, by the way, she can stop. Is still here? If I have to, I'll move to the car. Unfortunately, there's nowhere else I can go. I can't go in the bowling alley because they play music and I'll get a copyright strike. It's just someone that's willing to do anything and, and say anything. It's just, you know, anyway. Uh, but I'll leave it at that until after the 23rd. We'll, maybe I'll talk about it. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, so let's get on to the topic here today. We're blowing around. Everything's blowing away. I've got my hands holding things down. But um, good evening, Dylan. Having the born and raised in Kansas, we don't get hurricanes. What did I say? Hurricanes? No, I meant tornadoes. I lived in the Midwest. I lived in Iowa. Who said that? I didn't know Menagequa was from Kansas. All right, no, I meant tornadoes, tornado alley. Did I say hurricanes? That's probably because I got freaking, you know, typhoons stuck in my head from Agnes. We can't hear you. Are you the only one, John? Okay, all right, well, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. Hang tight. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Thought so. This sucks. Car is not the best place, but I'm going to go to the car, and we'll go from there. Okay, so stick with me, folks. Yeah, it's getting worse. I'm going to go to the car. <laughs> Menage a trois. <laughs> Sorry, I had to live in Iowa. That's just mean, man. That's just mean. <laughs> yeah, the wind is hectic, and there was no wind 10 minutes ago, folks. I sat down, no wind, not even a slight breeze. And all of a sudden, these wind, because rain clouds are blowing around. Here you go. All of a sudden, out of nowhere. Yeah, it's just wind, says Dylan. Yeah, but if you can't hear me, what's the point of watching the program? So let me get to my car where I can drowned out the wind. Man. I've got to keep looking at my phone because I'm wearing reading glasses. <laughs> they obstruct my vision further than about two feet from my face. So I'm looking over them so I don't trip. Oh boy. People are leaving. It's uh, Friday afternoon and uh, war college students typically uh, finish around noon or one depending on their schedule. And uh, particularly on a Friday. They're supposed to go home and do work there. Yes, Mother Nature is very unpredictable, Lorraine. All right, walk past the transformer. No, not the ones from the movies. <laughs> Electric transformer. Oh yeah, the new parking lot is three quarters empty now. It's full about 20 minutes ago. My goodness. Oh, come on. Now watch, I'll sit in the car and overheat. I have to let the windows down. Ugh. 
back to the car. Now I gotta get in the car. Be patient, folks. Thank you for your patience. Oh, there we go. Hey, I'm almost here. All right. Now look at my hair. Gee, many crickets. It's all over the place. So in the words of the famous commercial, can you hear me now? <laughs> the rain says much better. Yes, but uh, not so comfortable for me. Anyway. Uh, oh, whoa, what happened there? Phone fell. There you go. Isn't that special? Sorry about that, folks. Oh, wow, that was unplanned. My goodness. There we go. Whew. Sorry about that. Now, can you hear me and see me now? Is the phone still working? Are you guys still there? Oh, man. Whew. Anyway, we need to get on to the topic at hand, which I haven't had a chance to do yet. So, why did that thing fall forward? Anyway, whew, it's warm in here. I'm going to have to let the windows down just a little bit. Hang on. Or maybe all the way without too much difficulty there. They built this border wall after building a border wall with... <sighs> Come on. The radio comes on by default. It's genius technology, not... Anyway, so I have to open the door so that stops. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the phone fell. <laughs> that was special. Oh, uh, Debbie's loving the extras. <laughs> Zuma, the butcher of Camp Quattro. Exactly, Jan Fillon killed his own cater for entertainment. You are correct about that. And so let's talk about Jacob Zuma, Jay-Z, and what's going on here. Well, the bottom line, folks, is that Jacob Zuma has already won. That's right. MK and Jacob Zuma has already won. What do I mean by that? Have you looked at the newspapers? Are you watching social media? What are they talking about? Have you seen any stories about the Freedom Front Plus? You see a few stories about the DA, but not much. Any stories about the UDM? Any stories about any other opposition political party? Basically, no. It's all Zuma all the time. They have already won. So put this in your head and think about this for a moment. The Democratic Alliance was formed out of the old Liberal Party movement and others way back around 2000 time frame, around that time frame. So two and a half decades later, the Democratic Alliance is pulling about 17% in KwaZulu-Natal, the second most populous, pro populous province in South Africa. Sorry, I got to tie my, my fellies came untied. So my Sia Khaleesi fellies. So they're polling at about 17%, two and a half decades of governance and a track record of proven. And not to mention, I mean, uh, if you want an advertisement, I'm not, a, I'm not pimping for the DA, but if you want an advertisement for good governance, respectable government and success, you look no further than Umgeni and that, of course, is Howick and Chris Pappas in that administration. The DA should be touting what they've done there and just shouting it from the rooftops. But 17%. And in this election, with a party that lacks a headquarters, that lacks a manifesto, that lacks a constitution, that lacks funding, and is run by a convicted felon. Oh, well, here you go, Lorraine. There's my fellies, my C. Ecclesi fellies. There you go. There you go. Freedom of movement. These ones are Sia Khaleesi Signature Edition. Picked them up in Somerset West. I tried to give them at the flagship store in Stellenbosch, but they didn't have my size. Anyway, so this party, which doesn't exist, it's a vaporware party, is in the news all the time. And it is going to be, if not the largest polling party in KwaZulu-Natal on May 29th, it will be in the top three, probably number one, certainly at least number two, possibly number three. They are going to outpoll the DA, and Kata, and probably the ANC as well. A party that has nothing to it. It's just vaporware. All we're hearing about is Jacob Zuma and MK. The Independent Electoral Commission has gone back to court with an urgent interdict to the Constitutional Court to get them to stop the unlawful actions of the Electoral Court, which has violated the Constitution on two different levels. Quite frankly, the jurors and the jurists that are on that court should be removed from the bench because they're clearly functionally illiterate fools who cannot read South Africa's Constitution. Jacob Zuma is ineligible for serving in Parliament, and he's ineligible to run and serve as president of the Republic of South Africa. Two clauses in the Constitution written by the ANC government itself, he cannot serve. Number one, he was convicted of a felony 
beyond 12 month sentence. He got a 15 month sentence within the past five years. On June 29th, 2021, the Constitutional Court determined that he was in contempt of the court and therefore sentenced him to one five months, no less. The scamming ANC, Ronnie LaMola and Cyril Ramaphosa colluded to release thousands of convicted criminals, rapists, murderers, pedophiles, all kinds of people, release, release them into the streets so they could mask releasing Jacob Zuma. They gave him basically a remission. A remission does not change a conviction. So you do not have to have a remission. You do not have to never have served your sentence. You simply have to be, according to the Constitution, convicted of a crime and sentenced to more than 15 months, which or more than 12 months, which he was. So null and void, cannot serve in political office, case closed. It doesn't take a learned lawyer like uh, of the likes of, say, you know, of, um, uh, geez. Um, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't take a learned lawyer like Dali and Pofu <laughs> to come up with a conclusion that he's ineligible. He's ineligible, number one. Number two, the Constitution is quite clear. If you serve one day of a term and then you leave office, the entire term counts as a term. Zuma served his first term and 95% of his second term. Therefore, he has served two terms as president of the Republic of South Africa. And he's ineligible to be the president. So he's ineligible to be president because he's met the maximum threshold. And he's ineligible to be an office holder until the five-year mark has been passed. It's only been 22, 23, 24, not even three years since his conviction. So Jacob Zuma is not eligible. And the electoral court is corrupt and captured or simply incompetent. There you go. Not to mention his amazing healing. You see him dancing again. He had a medical release from prison because his life was in jeopardy. But the man has more moves than the Sugar Hill Gang. He can break dance better than Curtis Blow. It's unbelievable. Yes, those are old time references from the 1970s and 80s. They're the Sugar Hill Gang and Curtis Blow. Unbelievable. Jacob Zuma is ineligible, but it doesn't matter because he is the victim now. He is the martyr. He's under attack by the Independent Electoral Commission, which is run by liberation era, ANC friendly political operatives, even though they're supposed to be neutral. But they're not attacking Jacob Zuma. They're simply applying the rule of law. But they don't care about law. We've already heard Zuma say we don't need Roman Dutch law. And this is why he doesn't want Roman Dutch law. Because Dutch Roman law, Roman Dutch law, is anathema to people who do not believe in liberty, people who do not believe in governance, people who do not believe that systems of government should represent people, but rather dictatorial fascist clowns should run things, like Shaka Zulu or Jacob Zuma. They don't believe in government. The NC doesn't believe in government either. They prove it every single day. They are kleptocrats. So... MK and Jacob Zuma have won because they're stealing all the oxygen in the room. Everybody in social media, everybody in the legacy media, everybody in the captured state media, News 24, yes, I know they're a private organization, but they're essentially an organ of the African National Congress. The Propaganda 24, all of them, all, oh, it says Higher Education Minister Blade Enzyme, uh, Blade Enzyme dissolves the NSFAS, the St National Student Financial Aid Scheme. Yeah, he, he dissolved it. So the communist Blade Enzyme dissolved that. That's one of my topics to talk about today. But MK has won, ladies and gentlemen. They will sweep through KZN like a felled fire. And they will just capture constituency after constituency from the ANC because the ANC is so inept. And people are dumb enough to think of Jacob Zuma, a man who oversaw the second largest pilfering of resources from the state and from the hands of taxpayers and impoverished millions of black South Africans. They just look right past that. They look right past that because the illiterate goat farmer is the guy who's going to lead the standard for MK. They will not run the country, but they will likely have enough vote the way things are going nationally that they could form a coalition with the ANC. But everything is MK. From the IEC appeal to the Constitutional Court about disqualifying Zuma to Zuma telling the public that there are gangsters and gun-toting thugs in his own party. <laughs> it's just MK all the time. 
We might as well call the mainstream legacy media in South Africa the MK News Network because that's what they're becoming. And I'm not talking about Michael Kors. I'm talking about Mgonto way. So, hey, hey there, Teresa. Yeah, KZ and his lost cause. We should all have a doctor in front of our names as an honorary doctoral degree as award and recognition of one's life experiences. Well, I don't think that's an unfair assertion there. And life has been pretty cruel and tough for most of us here, but we do our best. So hang on a second here. All right, so back to the chat. Sovereign citizen, okay. Uh, Grasshopper's here. Christine's here. Nick Muller. And then, all right. And then hello to you, Christine. You can't scam a scammer. Jay-Z's the biggest scammer in common. He's one of the biggest. Armageddon News, Miraculous Healing. <laughs> Armageddon News. That's actually good. I should have stolen that title. Now the story is if Zuma gets elected in the parliament, any capacity still retains his pension and benefits. I that's I don't care about that. I mean, in the scheme of things, the money that Zuma gets, it doesn't matter. The man has pilfered and stolen millions of rand. What's a few hundred thousand rand? I don't really care about that. He's ineligible. It's time when Zuma was present when he set 10,000 conflicts for just before elections. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all those in parliament were in jail. Well, many of them were. Uh, winning is great. Yeah, they're winning. They've won. 100% better. Okay. All right. So now I'm caught up on the chat, at least to the last moments here. Let's see. On the way back to Namibia, my mother passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry, Andrea Fick. Uh, please drive carefully. Um, wow. Are you flying or are you driving? It's a long drive. And uh, my sincere condolences to you on the loss of your mother. I, I hope that um, she didn't suffer. And we all pass at some point and hope, can only hope that uh, it wasn't a painful um, passing. My mother was in much pain when she passed from stage four cancer, although they mitigated somewhat with uh, drugs. But yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunately, it's part of life. Uh, but um, I'm sorry for your loss and thank you for being here. Uh, it just shows you what a sense of community of folks who tune into this program really have. I didn't anticipate that. I got to be honest with you folks. I did not anticipate the sense of community the camaraderie, dare I say comradeship, it sounds communist-like, but the things that developed out of this community of people around the globe who watch this program and come on here, including many of my guests, uh, it's really caught me by surprise. I didn't expect that. I thought I would just put a video up here and a video there. Well, drive carefully, Andrea. I would put a video up here and a video there to promote my consulting business so that people would turn to me who wanted to invest in Africa. That was my intent at the very beginning that's what it was all about but it quickly changed into something else and while i recognize the power of social media and the significance and importance of it if it's used properly uh yeah my mother had stage four metastatic lung cancer i'm so sorry andrea the cancers get so many people it sucks i was knocking doors last week and i knocked on a gentleman's door who was just diagnosed with cancer he's a younger guy too um he see um he, he took my cards and was enthusiastic about my campaign but uh, I thanked him for his time, but um, his house had three Republicans, so he promised to tell his spouse and adult child about me. So, uh, but it was—it's tough when you knock on the door and someone just comes out and they're in bad shape, and uh, they actually take the time to listen to you. So I was very grateful for that. But I never expected this sense of community. It's really wild. Zuma, present for life, then son comes in like North Korea. <laughs> I don't think about that. Uh, hey, Garrett, how's it good? Good to see you there. And Hendo's here as well. Uh, I don't know if Erica's here. I may have missed that in the chat, but 98 people currently here because people are tuning in to hear about this story. So let's go on instead of talking about the community. Let's talk about the story here. So bribery, factional fighting, and gun-wielding bullies rock the MK party reveals none other than Jay-Z. No, I'm not talking about the one here in New York, but Jacob Zuma, former president Jacob Zuma has cracked the whip and issued a stern warning to ambitious MK party members who are eyeing parliamentary seats. He should probably warn them not to murder their colleagues. On Thursday, yesterday, Zuma said he would not tolerate leaders who seek to divide members and insult South Africans. Well, that sounds like the ANC. He revealed that bribery, gun-wielding bullies, and imposters would face the wrath of MK party leaders. Well, who are these MK party leaders? You've already relieved the youth leader. He's no longer the youth leader. Former President and Mkontoi Sizwe leader Jacob Zuma has revealed that the newly formed party is grappling with shady and unscrupulous individuals, including fraudsters and gun-toting bullies. Well, that sounds an awful lot to me, folks, like the African National Congress. He made the remarks yesterday, two days after the Electoral College offered him a lifeline. They let him compete in the elections unlawfully. <coughs> Excuse me. This is what Jacob Zuma had to say, ladies and gentlemen. We are not playing. Nobody is going to do whatever they want and not what the party of members want. So, my goodness. So, let me be very explicit about this, ladies and gentlemen. This is why South Africa doesn't have a legitimate democracy. This is why. 
So Jacob Zuma makes it very clear that what matters in South Africa is not the constituents, not the voters, sure as hell not the taxpayers. It's party over people. Politics and party over people. People come last in South Africa. You always come last. Why? Because you don't elect leaders. You elect parties who choose the reprobates, the criminals, the... Ugh, I just leave it at that. The nasty people who make decisions that affect your lives, who have no loyalty to you, the voter, whatsoever. This is the most corrupt concept for political establishment that you can imagine short of a democracy or a totalitarian state. I mean, not democracy, a, uh, a communist state or a totalitarian state. This is absolutely back crap crazy. So Jacob Zuma makes it very clear that the voter does not matter. It is not the voter that matters. It is, of course... The party, party over people. And it's no different for any other political party in South Africa, but very explicit here. He said, nobody is going to do whatever they want and not what the party and members want. Wow. Party over people. Well, Debbie, I've said that for years and I say it here too. One of the things about my campaign is that I'm not beholding to anybody. I've taken no money from the, now when the primary different story, but right now I am my own man and I say what I say. And if people vote for me, fantastic. If they don't, that's their prerogative. But I don't pull punches. I don't lie to people. I don't pander them. I don't tell them what they want to hear so I can get their vote. And if that means that the best candidate doesn't win, then so be it. I will not compromise my integrity and my principles to represent people to get elected to office. Getting elected to office is not that important that you compromise who you are. Unfortunately, our politicians in America, in Europe, and in South Africa will do anything to ingratiate themselves with poly party leaders so they get on a list. So when that party gets a percentage of vote, they get into power and they have their hands on the tenders. They have their hands on blue light escorts and they feel important. Something they're not. Something they're not. They're not important. Trust me. What is this shame? Morphine benefit. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So he goes on. He say, if you are out of order, we will remove you. Those who have imposed themselves on the list, conducted themselves in a corrupt manner and paid bribes, think we are not aware of their conduct. We know exactly who you are. Well, there's a threat. There's a line in the sand put in place by none other than the convicted felon, Jacob Zuma, the man responsible for countless deaths in Angola at the Camp Quattro, where they murdered their own MK members. The former head of MK Intelligence, Jacob Zuma, the man who built the Inconla Mansion with its famous fire pole, or should we say infamous fire pole, with state money that belonged to you, he stole. The man who participated in the corrupt arms deal to buy frigates and advanced fighter jets from Gripen and trainers from Hawk from British Aerospace. All of this stuff that the South African military did not need, could not maintain. But why do they do it? Because the corrupt little offsets, the corrupt little tenders, the back pocket money stuck in people's pockets, the bribery that took place, including Jacob Zuma, which I can say clearly was responsible and participated in bribery. And how do I know this? Because Judge Hillary Squires years ago when he convicted Shabir Sheikh said that Shabir Sheikh was guilty of giving money to Jacob Zuma who knowingly received it and it was a bribe from those European companies. And the only reason Jacob Zuma didn't go to jail is because he was not a defendant in the case. And of course the NC will not ever put him on trial. It was the constitutional court that did that. Wow. So... Now, Zuma was speaking after the postponement of his private prosecution because he's going after Ramaphosa in the Hoteng High Court yesterday. Now, there has been a leadership shakeup inside the nascent party MK, which has only been around for a few months, which has no manifesto. It has no constitution. It has no headquarters. It has no noted source of funding, which they've reported to the IC. But there's been a leadership shakeup in this new party already. News 24 reported that MK removed suspected July 2021 riot investiga instigator Bonkingosi Kanyile from his youth leadership position in a shakeup that saw three other senior youth leaders immediately removed. Kanyile was close to Zuma and regularly attended meetings chaired by the MK party leader, and now he's out. Kanyile was the party's national youth coordinator and rose to prominence during the Fees Must Fall protest. He's that kind of idiot. Then he joined the Patriotic Alliance, and then he joined... <laughs> MK. Yeah. So um, he was removed. Um, he's also part of the deadly 2021 riots. Uh, they also gave instructions to Interim Secretary General Minehile Sibane and Hauteng Youth League Coordinator Gazuzu Nduli and National Youth League Deputy President Tapelo Maisha, all 
pushed aside by MK Party. It's the second leadership change without an elective conference in just two months. The party maintains it will hold a conference after the May elections. Jacob Zuma, the octogenarian who's now 82 years old, threatened to spill the beans on those bullying their way into top positions. We will embarrass others by telling the nation what they have done. Now, that's ironic coming from a man who is known for his corruption. State capture. We have learned that there are parallel structures, and we have heard that some people even carry guns. They are playing with fire. We are like no political party that exists in the current political landscape to the bullies who want positions at all costs. We so we say sorry, uskies. Well, they are like no party in the political environment because they don't exist. It's a vaporware party. It's a personality party, just like COPE. that wouldn't exist without Tara Lakota, just like the Economic Freedom Fighters, who would not exist without Julius Malema. Just six weeks ago to the elections, he told supporters to focus on securing two-thirds majority. <laughs> okay, like, let, me, let me tell you something. Jacob Zuma, you will not get two-thirds majority in South Africa. If you think you can secure two-thirds majority in South Africa, you, my friend, are delusional. You're not just a thief. You're not just a nasty person. You are delusional if you think that's going to happen. You can win KwaZulu-Natal, but you will not win the Western Cape. You will not win, ha win Gauteng. And you are unlikely to win the ANC's strongholds in Mpumalanga, Northwest, or the Eastern Cape. Simply not going to happen. You maybe could do something in the free state. I don't know. But you are not going to win two-thirds. So what you're going to do is create yourself a wedge party that has the ability to be the kingmaker when the ANC drops down below 40% now. Ladies and gentlemen, what did I predict? I see other people claiming they predicted now, but you can go back and watch my videos. I've said all along... I've said all along, and I've covered the elections since the last elections, that the ANC, at best, is 42% in 2024, likely 38%, 38 to 42%. And I said, I hope they go to 33%. No, you're right, Ken Anson. Jacob Zuma doesn't know what two-thirds is. He has no idea what two-thirds is. He says, people are squabbling over nothing. Have you secured the two-thirds majority? After we've secured the two-thirds majority, have formed an interim structure. And so this means it does not matter which positions you occupy right now. We are all interim leaders. There are no permanent leaders. We are working as volunteers of MK. Those people who I've been told are squabbling our positions won't even smell these positions. <laughs> this will decrease our support because we're busy fighting with one another. You will really know me after we have won the elections. And that's the bottom line. This is why these people, this is why these people want to be in politics. Because they want power, money, privilege. Power, privilege, and the purse. Yeah, just, there we go. That's the three Ps. Privilege, power, and the purse. That's what these clowns want. They don't care about you. Just like many of these rhinos, Republicans in name only, these Democrats who have gone so far left, they're not even Democrats, they're demon rats. They don't care about you. They care about their privilege, their access to power, and the purse that puts money in their pocket legitimately or illegitimately. I guarantee you that's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. That is the reality we're dealing with here. And that's the that's the true story here. So according to Zuma, after the elections, the MK will establish strict laws and policies that would govern the party. <laughs> Was he going to serve 15 months or would he be qualified for parole for good behavior? It doesn't matter. He was convicted. That's what it says. Zuma says, one organization will respect the nation, the people, and its members. What we are doing is, in Kotosi's way, is fixing this country. We cannot fight over positions if we want to fix the country. Did we form Mkonto for our personal gains? Yes! That's exactly why you formed Mkotosi's way. For your personal gain. <laughs> really? Jacob Zuma. Hey, Jay-Z, brother. We know your game. We know all the little scumbags that you're talking about toting guns and jockeying for position. They're not doing it because they care about people in South Africa. They don't care about the fact that the ANC has destroyed the golden calf. They don't care about the fact that ANC has made South Africa a third-rate developing nation. They don't care. They don't care that they brought most people down to the same level of misery instead of uplifting everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, there are demonstrably more millions of black South Africans living in poverty today than there ever were under the National Party. And the world needs to know this. Stop deluding yourselves. Stop buying into the nonsense. MK is simply bum-hurt Jay-Z supporters. They're ANC light.
They're not light, though. They're just another version of the ANC, just like the economic freedom fighters. Don't fall for the nonsense, ladies and gentlemen. This is the reality. They have already won. Let's go back to the story. Because all the news, all the time, in the legacy media, in Propaganda 24, also known as News 24, the news organ of the ANC, all of this media and social media are talking about Jacob Zuma, and I'm talking about him. Why? Because I'm telling you they already won. It doesn't mean they're going to win the election. It means they've already won. Because opposition parties can get no oxygen. Jay-Z and MK are sucking all of the oxygen out of the room. Just like Donald Trump in 2016 when he announced he's running for the presidency. Suddenly, every friggin' friggin news organization stopped covering the other candidates and they would do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has just walked out of the toilet in a building in Manhattan. Let's go now to see what Trump has to say. But that's what they did. And that's what's happening with Jay-Z now. And he gets to play the victim. Oh, what was me? The IEC hates me. They're, they're persecuting me. Oh. <coughs> yeah, you go. ANC dark. That's what they are. This is this is South Africa's dark Brandon moment. Watch that phrase be turned into, oh, racist. No, he's the dark Brandon. He's the Joe Biden of South Africa. Clueless wonder. Except the difference is Jay-Z can dance pretty well and he can climb a flight of stairs unlike Joe Biden. That's right. But they have won. They have stolen the narrative. They have stolen all the oxygen in the room. And they it's newsworthy because that's what's happened. We're six weeks away, and they're going to do everything they can to stay in the news. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, the Independent Electoral Commission determined correctly under the Constitution that Jacobson was ineligible to serve in Parliament because he was convicted of a felony and sentenced to more than 12 months imprisonment in less than five years ago. Because of that, the IC determined he was ineligible for that reason. Plus, he's ineligible to serve as president even if he gets into parliament because he served two terms already. The fact that the IC made that decision, which is correct, lawful, legitimate, under the Constitution, just made him a martyr in the eyes of the low-information voters. And now that the Electoral Court has unlawfully overridden that decision and says he has to be on the ballot, they've just created confusion. And they've done the work of the MK party. The ANC must be going through fits. But you know what? It couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of criminals. The ANC must be doing backflips, freaking out about what's going on now. They must be melting down. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Ralph Posa is gone. He will not be the leader of the ANC after this. There's no way he survives this. No way Sir Ralph Posa survives this nonsense. He has led the ANC onto path to oblivion. But you know what? He didn't do it alone. He was helped by the Secretary General. He was helped by his justice. Minister. He was helped by his idiotic police minister. He was helped by his former defense minister, who was also a fool, and his former health minister, who was a fool. He picked people in his cabinet who were disastrous for South Africa, and he deserves his fate. Menir Palapala should not be in government. He should be removed and excised from the political sphere. That's what should happen. This is what happens when you have a political system that's corrupt and you vote for parties, not for candidates. If you vote for the candidate and they betray you, they don't get reelected. But if the if the member of parliament betrays you and your interest in your country and your nation, you have nothing to say about it because people will still vote for that party and then you still have them in parliament. Look at the case of Winnie Mandela, the mother of the nation. Ah, she's a murderous creep. That's right, I said it. That's right. She ordered the kidnapping and no doubt the murder of Stompy, a 14-year-old boy because he was supposedly a snitch. She was convicted of kidnapping. Case is clear. She was also convicted of criminal action under the African National Congress by pilfering money. Yet she still sat in parliament and morons like Jacob Zuma venerated her as the mother of the nation. This woman who had a 14-year-old boy kidnapped and murdered. Yep. Wow. Unbelievable. So, Jacob Zuma also warned members of the MK party about insulting their leaders during political campaigns. Don't insult others. The politics of speaking about other people, what does it mean? You are here representing people, but you are hurling insults at them. Even when you disagree with people, do it with respect using political language. What have people done? You're chasing away potential supporters. It's weak politics and shows your politics is limited. Now, listen, Jacob Zuma is correct. He gets it. He understands politics. He's correct on that. You don't do that. That's why I've held my fire against opponents in this campaign. Negative campaigning and insulting your opponents and insulting the people who are supposed to vote for you is dumb politics. And he's correct. 
He said the MK party will continue to rid itself of leaders that transgress. Well, I'll believe that when I see it. 60 likes, 176 people here. Be sure to hit that like button, folks. Doesn't cost you anything but a moment of time. You gain nothing from insulting people in politics. The truth always remains and lies have very short legs. Well, lies have long legs. Look at the nonsense that happened in Israel over the IDF supposedly bombing a hospital they never bombed. It was bombed. It wasn't bombed, but it was a missile fired by Islamic Jihad and it failed and exploded over a crowd of people, not even in the hospital. But the lie was told that Israel attacked the hospital. And lies do have long legs, unfortunately. We want respectful leaders who respect elders, the nation, and the black nation. What black nation? Oh, now South Africa's a black nation? Whatever happened to the rainbow nation? Where did the rainbow Nazi go there? What happened there, Jay-Z? All you care about is black people? Well, there you go. Just revealed it. You don't care about Indians, coloreds, others. We also need to change things in South Africa. We need to change the demarcation in South Africa where black South Africans live in townships and white people with money live in cities. Is apartheid over? No. All right. Well, guess who was president and didn't change it? You, Jacob Zuma. Guess who's been in charge of South Africa for 30 years and hasn't changed the dynamic? You, ANC. And you're just ANC dark. That's what you are. Wow. So it's apartheid over. I'm sorry. I've been to leafy neighborhoods in Pretoria. I've been to leafy neighborhoods in Johannesburg. And who lives there? Caters. Rich, connected cadres. Patronage puppies of the ANC. They live in highfalutin neighborhoods. I've been to informal settlements outside Pretoria where white Afrikaners live in abject poverty who get no SASA grants from the state. Who's responsible for that? Look at this. Jacob Zuma is now resorting to race hustling just like every other scumbag in South Africa. Something he's rarely done in the past. Shame on you, Zuma. Shame on you, racially bifurcating society. There's a reason why most black people don't live in nice neighborhoods. It's called the African National Congress and it's racially polarized policies. Ladies and gentlemen, many South Africans would be wealthy now. Many South Africans would be living, living with lovely access to broadband internet access courtesy of... Starlink. Imagine all the businesses that could have been started up in South Africa delivering Starlink, installing Starlink for customers. Delivering broadband capability for a not cheap but reasonable cost to rural South Africans, to communities not served by the network. But what happened? The ICASA, the, in, in, in the Communications Authority in South Africa, demanded that Elon Musk form a subsidiary and give 30% of his equity to someone who was black. Not someone who invested in this company, not someone who's competent, not someone who understood the telecommunications industry, but someone because they were black. That's why people are poor in South Africa, because you racist in the ANC. And that includes Jacob Zuma's actions as president. You were president for nearly eight or 10 years. You didn't fix anything. You drove the country into abject poverty. And you have the audacity to say this. Let me read this again. We need to change things in South Africa. We need to change the demarcation in South Africa where black South Africans live in townships and white people with money live in cities. Well, black people and more of them live in cities with money. Fire trucks, fire trucks. Wow. You will soon hear that other senior leaders will be removed from the party because they're not doing what we have asked them to do. We want them to work for South Africans, not for us. Do you hear me? He said the leadership shakeup would continue to ensure that the right people are elected into positions. Now, the right people won't be attacked. The, the loyal people will be erect, elected into positions. That's the bottom line. The loyal people. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Grasshopper, it's unfortunate. Ron Pose will buy his way in the prisons. Exactly. Okay, what else there? Lesotho getting Starlink. Yep, but not South Africa. Yep. Yep, that's right. Hong Kong. Uh, uh, yeah, that's not us saying Hong Kong. They're saying something else. Who cares how he trips and falls over his own feet as long as the black hole disappears in oblivion? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. So back to the story here. People are dropping out now because I stopped being on fire. Let me get back to being on fire. The Independent Electoral Commission has lodged an urgent constitutional court appeal after the out-of-control lawless captured South African Electoral Court ruling on Jacob Zuma's participation in the May 29th election. The Electoral Commission of South Africa has lodged an urgent and direct appeal to the Constitutional Court to challenge an electoral court order on decision to bar Mkontwe Sizwe party leader Jacob Zuma from participating in elections. The IEC said that Zuma cannot be a candidate because he was sentenced to 15 months for contempt of court. And I agree. That's what the Constitution says. That decision was challenged on Monday and the party's battle out in electoral court with Dali and Pofu, the clown car himself, appearing in court. On Tuesday, the court erroneously ruled in Zuma's favor, favor which meant that he could contest for a parliamentary seat and his name topped the MK list. 
However, the IEC wants clarity after the Electoral Court did not provide reasons for its order. The commission believes there is substantial public interest in the providing certainty on the proper interpretation of Section 47, Subsection 1, Paragraph E of the Constitution and its interplay with the powers of the commission to adjudicate objections to candidates. It's furthermore important that such legal clarification be obtained from the highest court in the land, which has constitutional matter jurisdiction, hence a direct appeal to the constitutional court, and they are correct to go there. They are correct to go there. The commission wishes to emphasize that this appeal is not intended to involve itself in the political field of play. It is rather to ensure free and fair elections by ensuring that applicable constitutional provisions relating to elections are clearly understood by all role players and applied evenly. 100%, ladies and gentlemen, 100%. That is the bottom line here. That is the bottom line here. Now on to the exciting news for the prison suit wearing economic freedom fighters, the clowns who wear pajamas to parliament. The EFF Secretary General, Marshal Delamini, has been convicted of assault and property damage from an incident that occurred in 2019, five years ago. Justice delayed, but finally justice. But let's see what his sentencing will turn out. Delamini claimed he was acting to protect Julius Malema from a perceived assassination threat. Sentencing has been postponed till May 31st after the elections, and he remains out on bail until then when... He should be in jail, potentially. EFF Secretary General and Head of Security, Marshal Delaney, has been convicted of assault with intent to cause grievous bodily harm. Yeah! Yabo! As well as malicious damage to property for hitting a policeman in Parliament. So how is it that Julius Malema can physically assault a senior SAPS officer who's white because Julius Malema's race hustling? He attacked the police officer, physically harmed him at the funeral of Winnie Mandela, and gets away with it. But Marshal Dalamini is convicted of the same sort of thing. Magistrate Nasha Banwari said in her judgment in the Cape Town Regional Court, she did not accept Dalamini's claim that he was protecting Julius Malema from an assassination threat. Now, he hit Johan Karstens in the face and broke his glasses in a fracas in the lobby on February 7th, 2019, after the State and Nation address. Sentencing proceedings were postponed to May 31st. Isn't that funny? So, so basically, Marshal Dalamini's defense was that it was the, it was the Blanqui Chava, the Blanqui Chava. It was the white fear, the white threat. That's why he did something. <laughs> he pled not guilty, claiming that he reacted that way because he was on high alert after a tip-off that Malema was going to be assassinated at the state nation address with a poison injection. <laughs> and he'd seen Carstens heading towards Malema. So Carstens, a member of the law enforcement, was perceived as a threat to Malema. Why? Because he's white? Because he's white? Is Marshall Delamini a racist? He thinks that white people, white people are a threat to Julius Malema? <laughs> he doesn't have any dirt on anybody, Grasshopper. He's just a convenient idiot. The assault charge for hitting Carson's in the face and the damage to property charge was for breaking his glasses. He's out on bail. During the instance, Carson sustained a three centimeter wound on the bridge of his nose and redness on one cheek. The doctor testified in the assault trial, Dr. Lynn Svots, previously said that Carstens had blood on the bridge of his nose, cheek, and collar when she treated him. Yep, after the incident, the EFF said in a statement that the party had been on heightened alert at the Sona after getting information of a right-wing plot to assassinate Malema. They believe that when a scuffle started, the plot to kill him was in motion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, poor little white kids who see black thugs hanging out of the street corner with pants hanging down, exposing their butt cracks, are accused of being racist because they walked around the thugs. Little black kids take the same prudent decision and not accused of racism. So, is he a racist because he assumed that the white Saps officer was part of a right-wing plot? You be the judge. Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph Robinette Biden is stealing another $7.4 billion from America's Americans' pockets with this criminal illegal debt forgiveness to 277,000 borrowers. Now, illegally canceled debt tops $153 billion in student loan debt, shifting that debt from the people who borrowed it into the obligations of U.S. taxpayers because Barack Hussein Obama stole the federal student loan program from the private banking sector and gave it to the federal government, burying us in more debt. This is 9% of all student loan debt, $153 billion dollars. It has been forgiven for 4.3 million people who do not deserve debt forgiveness. They borrowed the money to go to school, to get an education, to make more money and have careers. Why should plumbers and carpenters and farmers and cherry pickers be the ones paying for their debt? It shouldn't be. 
Anyway, so there you have it. So let's talk more about this MK situation. They've won. They've won the argument. I was walking a dog out here. They've won the argument, folks. Let's see what the chat has to say. All right. Put in the greats. Uh, considering that it seems that South Africa is on the road to Zimbabwe, what's your take on the talks Western Cape bring up? I'm going to get to that. We can talk Western Cape secession here in a moment. Question with Marshall Lim is how will he be punished? Will he be sentenced to serve time? Probably not. They'll try to pull some crap. It was just in Parliament, so it's not a real assault. Sounds like BS, yep. All right, so let's get back to the story here in hand. We says like, we. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so um, the question was about the Western Cape and secession. Look, um, the United Liberty Alliance, the Cape Independence Movement, Cape Exit, um, all of these groups have been around for a number of years, and the uh, Democratic Alliance promised a referendum in the Western Cape for secession and never delivered on it. They reneged on a promise they made because, and understandably so, I don't know why they made the promise. That was the mistake they made, I guess, to, to pander for votes, but the Democratic Alliance never should have made that argument. The Democratic Alliance is a national party, and they have obligations to the country, not simply to the Western Cape. So making such a statement was politically foolish, but they did it, who knows, probably for political expediency. So the promise referendum and the government is controlled the parliament by the Democratic Alliance. They can put legislation in anytime they want. They can put referendums in anytime they want and execute them, but they fail to do it. So they betrayed a lot of people in that standpoint. So Western Cape secession is possible politically. It's possible economically. It's possible militarily wise. Absolutely is possible. But it's not going to happen. Nobody's doing it. So. Anyway, yes, I did three earlier shorts today talking about some of these issues. So you can catch those one-minute shorts talking about these three topics if you like. But we've had a lot more viewers tune in for this conversation about MK. Listen, folks, here's the bottom line. The more that the media talks about MK, the more social media talks about MK, the more people will pay attention to it. Doris from the Priest for Life anti-abortion group. I don't know what Priest for Life and anti-abortion group is. What are you talking about? Um, the turning away. I'm not sure. Why would I seek that endorsement? Um, yeah, no, I'm uh, myself. I oppose abortion. I'm not a fan of it. Um, I took an oath to support and defend Americans and their liberties. And, you know, I really can't align with people who think it's perfectly okay to end the life of an American because it's inconvenient. South Africa will collapse, Western Cape, and Natal will secede. Well, Hendo, I've also said that in the past, that when South Africa collapses, in fact, the Western Cape secession will probably come after Zulu secession. The Zulu nation in KwaZulu-Natal will probably secede from South Africa before. And no one's talking about that, but that's coming too, folks, unless somebody takes over the government in South Africa and turns things around. All it will take is a legitimate government running South Africa and 6 to 10 to 12 months of progress before Western Cape secession talk dies down and KZN uh, um, anger dies down. People are just angry. Most people just want to have a decent life. They want to be able to worship the way they like. They want to they want to raise their family, raise their children, live a life, live in relative comfort. We're not talking about, you know, in condo like mansions for everybody. But the people in charge in the United States, in Harrisburg, in Washington, in Albany, in Annapolis, in Pretoria, in South Africa, in Berlin, in Germany, in London, in Paris, they want to divide people by race, gender, sexuality, classism. Because that's what communists and socialists do. They come for everybody. And if you think they're your friends, you are highly mistaken. If you think MK is going to govern in any way, they have no idea how to govern. They're busy trying to play the gangster role like the ANC has done in KZN for years. Assassinating people who are your political opponents so you can get your hands on the tenders. Father Frank Pavone heads the organization, big Trump supporter. Oh, okay. All right. I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with it. Viva MK party says royal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, Chris, on life. Okay, yeah. Yep, South Africa is crashing. I can't see this country survive much longer. Well, Christine, not with these, these jackals in charge. It definitely won't survive much longer. It will not survive much longer with these jackals in charge. That's why you must go to the polls. Look, I tried to motivate South Africans to inspire them with my extensive coverage, more extensive coverage than any media outlet in South Africa, than any social media outlet, than any YouTube commentator. I covered eight political party leaders, or eight, part, eight political party 
parties with candidates I interviewed and the leaders of six of those parties in the 2021 municipal elections. I talked about the elections for months, for years before it happened, and 31% of voters went out. We have a national election coming up on May 29th in South Africa, and people must get out and do it. Uh, there aren't many Catholics my way, uh, turning away. There are not simply many Catholics here. Uh, the closest Catholic church to me is in Harrisburg, and uh, there's no local churches. Lots of evangelicals around, all sorts of those things. There's Baptists around. Um, I myself am I'm a, I'm a member of the United Methodist Church, and I've got a conundrum. The United Methodist Church has had a schism over homosexuality, gay priest, and transgenderism. And as a consequence, United Methodist Church has split, much like the split in Catholicism that led to the Protestant Reformation with Martin Luther and others, and Swingley, and before that, others. So the split in the Catholic Church that occurred centuries ago is something that's recently happened in the United Methodist Church. Yes, Trump will be back, Adrian. He will be back. It's um, whether he's going to be allowed to become president again if the forces that seek to stop him are successful, but we will see in the fall. But um, yes, um, the, the United Methodist Church is split because of this. So the irony is that the people who believe in conservative traditional values in the United Methodist Church are in Africa by and large, with, the small, with some in America. So where does the leadership of the United Methodist Church go is the question now. Uh, you do left the Methodists because of the schism, probably. But there are Methodists who still believe in traditional values, mostly in Africa, some here in North America. So the United Methodist Church is breaking into factions, and I don't know which faction someone's supposed to go with, where you're supposed to go. But again, listen, ladies and gentlemen, the thing about a church, a church is simply a place where people come together to worship together and share their experience with the deity they believe in. But you don't have to go to church to have faith. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian or to be a Muslim. You don't have to go to a mosque to be a good Muslim. Muslims will tell you, you do. You don't. Muslim soldiers pray in the field. Muslim soldiers seek advice from imams in the field. Deployed, not in a mosque. There's no mosque. You don't need a mosque. You don't need a synagogue. You do not need a church to worship your deity. You can do that in the privacy of your own home, underneath a tree somewhere. That is your prerogative. And the fact that a person is not a churchgoer is not meaning a person they're not a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim. What is this? Uh, so you didn't know about the United Methodist Church? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Attending very strict conservative Alpha Cross Church does not play social norms. Yep. Thank you, Hendo. A church is just a building. And there's nothing wrong with a church, a mosque, or a synagogue. That is your prerogative to worship with others and share your faith. But you don't have to go to those buildings to have a faith. That is a misnomer. And people seem to think a church attendance equals faith. It does not. It does not. When I attended churches, I saw plenty of people who had no real faith. Plenty of hypocrites. Plenty of hypocrites who go to church and expect people there as if going to church is going to absolve you of your sins. As if going to church shows your commitment and your faith to a higher being. It does not. It can be a symptom, a symbol of it, but it doesn't mean you have it. And that's an important distinction I think for people need to know. So we hear a lot about how people don't go to church anymore, particularly in Europe. And that's, oh, there's a little tiny Tesla, a little gray, tiny Tesla. There you go with your big battery polluting the environment. It's going to wind up in a landfill. I'll tell you what, though, people I've talked to have Teslas universally love them. They universally love them. But anyway, true, lots of religious hypocrites. There are a lot of religious hypocrites. So let me see if he's, he's got to come down the street so he'll go behind me here in a second. There he goes. Tesla. You know, do they have to generate noise so you don't get hit by them? I mean, it's not like there's an engine turning stuff over in there, is it? It's just parts moving around. <laughs> anyway, so let me get on to some more news here, folks. But the gospel does call the faithful to... Yes, it does, Christine. But you can go to revivals. You can go to events. What is regularly, Christine? What is regularly? What is regularly? Not attending church as is an act of faith, not faith itself. I'm not sure what Matthew's saying there. Let's get on to some more news here, folks. Lots of Teslas in the UK. There are, and there's a few in South Africa, but not a lot. So poll, a recent poll suggests that 30% of black men in America in seven swing states are supporting Trump. That's up from the 12% support he got from black men in 2020. Biden has had a, seen a 30-point drop in his support amongst black men across the country. Joe Biden is toast. 
toast. Toast, ladies and gentlemen. He's toast. He's betrayed the black community like he's always done, and now people are finally waking up to it. There's Erica. $24 billion California spent on the homeless between 2018 and 2023, and they can't account for it. They cannot show outcomes for $24 billion expenditures because this is what big government socialists do. They take from you, give to someone else that's a favorite class to impoverish you, to control you. That's what taxes are all about, folks. It's about controlling you. It's not about giving you good governance. The more money they take out of your pocket, the less freedom you have. Money isn't about wealth. It isn't about having the bigger in Conla Mansion or having the bigger house in Munzenberg. That's not what it's about. It's not about living in a high income zip code in America. It's about freedom. Money shouldn't be about living like the Joneses or the Smiths or the Cardassians or the Laminis or the Duplessis. It should be about your ability to do things. If you have money, you can get on a plane when you want and go where you want. If you have money, you can purchase what you need when you want. It's not about outdoing your neighbors. That's true freedom. Money brings freedom and liberty. It gives you choices. That's what you should think about money. That's what it's all about. $24 billion of your money in California spent, Hebrews 10.25, spent on the homeless. No, out, no outcomes. They have even begun... They dropped back in 2020. They don't even evaluate the impact of the money. So, Russian airstrikes have destroyed the Tripilska thermal power plant located 45 kilometers south of Kiev. 1.8 megawatt facility is completely destroyed. It serves 3 million customers in Ukraine. 3 million. Now, low seasonal demand because it's springtime means that the grid has been able to shift and accommodate. So those people still have power, but they're not getting it from the Trubuska thermal power plant, which has been destroyed by a Russian attack. Now, that plant is powered not by solar photovoltaic, not by wind turbines, not by leftist fantasies about power generation. But that power plant was fired by anthracite coal. Yeah, baby. Hard coal, anthracite, hard coal, good stuff. And as I said earlier, Blaine Enzimande, the communist who is head of higher education, has dissolved the National Student Financial Aid Scheme Board. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, the airport's company South Africa is warned of a potential jet fuel crisis in South Africa owing to refinery maintenance and a tax dispute between authorities and petroleum companies. So the Sassol NatRef Inland refinery will shut down for seasonal maintenance. That refinery has a capacity of 108,000 barrels per day. South Africa already has virtually no refineries in operation, just two that I'm aware of this one from Sassel and another down in the Western Cape, just north of Cape Town because the Durban facility was shut down. Does Trump have... Uh, or does Trump has in common with Jacob Zeno? Are you have a question there, James? What does he have in common? Please rephrase that. South Korea's main opposition party has won a landslide election. They now have 175 seats in the 300 seat parliament. The president has proven to be quite unpopular. By the way, I'm wearing a 2011 Springbok Rugby World Cup tie today. There you go. This was a gift on one of my trips to South Africa. I didn't have one of these. At least I don't think I did. I think this was a gift. I had one of these similar, but someone gave me this one. Thank you for that. So, Myanmar's criminal military junta has lost an important city, suffering a major blow with the loss of the southeastern town of Mawadi. Mawadi was lost. This is a border town with Thailand, a critically important location. And the Karen and National Union rebels have claimed that they have captured this town. But media cannot independently verify that. However, reportedly 200 government soldiers withdrew from there, and now it falls on the current National Union. Wow. The scumbags that are running Myanmar are losing left and right, folks. Losing left and right. Where is my sunglasses? Didn't I have those that came here? My goodness. What did I do with those? I hope I didn't leave them over there on the table because I don't see them here. Wow. Did I put them in my pocket? There they are. It's getting bright here. I need my sunglasses. How's campaigning going, Chris? Um, uh, campaign is it's going well, I suppose. But I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a marathon, not a, a sprint. And we've still got uh, time till the twenty. Well, I can't see any of the chat now. Now I look like ZZ Top. 
<laughs> Sharp dress band. Anyway, yeah, so thanks for tuning in, folks. I'm going to have to go back to the reading glasses because the sunglasses, I just cannot see the screen very clearly. But now the sun is out, teasing me here. Diesel petrol in South Africa become more expensive for generators. That's true. Yep. And what else? Um, you're making us feel old. 2011. <laughs> Trump having come with Jacob. Oh, do, what does Trump have in common with Jacob Zuma? Uh, well, um, I don't know. I don't know. Are you going to say they're both convicted of crimes? Uh, Donald Trump has been convicted of a crime that doesn't exist, so you really can't count that one against him. Um, dig the tie. Yeah, I dig the two, tie, too. It's pretty cool. Check it out, man. There you go. 2011, a rugby World Cup. By the way, that was my first World Cup, and I've been to every World Cup save the Women's World Cup in New Zealand, which was supposed to occur in 2021, but the cowards delayed it 2022, which made it impossible for me to go to it because I also went to the Rugby League World Cup, which was also delayed in England for a year, and I had more tickets for that, and had spent more money on that than I have in the Women's World Cup. So also, it's a good thing I didn't go to the Women's World Cup because I had tickets for the women, the American women, and they were scumbags who took a knee um, with their idiotic political protest and will never receive another penny from me again for their shameful political actions in betraying America. We pay for a kit for them to wear the American flag, wearing our red, white, and blue colors, and they insult patriots for this country with their political lit narrative and lie about America. Hey, Green Phantom, both have fame. Oh, okay, thank you, Green Phantom. A day and night. So let's just stay and night. Um, all commodities going, yeah, everything's going up sharply as a consequence of this refining capacity. The RAND is already under pressure. When there's a jet fuel shortage, it'll it'll probably go past the $20, 20 to a dollar mark. That's coming soon. Yeah, anyway, so uh, rugby tie for you, Colonel. Oh, you got a 95 tie, Hester. Oh, my goodness. Please hold on to that one for me. I don't have a 95 rugby tie. That will help add to my collection of rugby ties. I get these all the time. Um, you know, I'm a huge Springbok fan. And um, so 2011 was my first World Cup. I wanted to go for years, but I couldn't. In 2007, I was in Liberia, and I made a, a, an agreement with uh, Bruce, who was the uh, head of, secu of the, uh, the vetting team there for the recruits for the AFL. He's an Australian who used to play professional rugby and super rugby. He was also a cop. And Bruce um, and I agreed that we watched the 2007 World Cup final in Liberia, projected on the wall from a satellite. And we said we'd go wherever we're at in 2011. We'll meet up in New Zealand for the World Cup, and he'll support the Wallabies, and I'll support the Springboks. Well, just two weeks before the World Cup, he got a job he couldn't turn down in South Africa. So he was in South Africa and unable to travel. You can't just, you know, hey, I'm here. Thank you for letting me be part of your team. By the way, I'm going to the World Cup now for two weeks. So I went to New Zealand for two weeks. Um, it was rather fortuitous for me. I was supposed to be in Chad and I wound up getting diverted to Stuttgart. So I um, was able to be there for a few months and then get leave because they reorganized my, my, my division and I wasn't needed for short term. So I went to New Zealand for two weeks. I flew from Stuttgart but was stuck in Stuttgart for hours. The plane backed away from from the terminal and stopped about 15 meters after it started moving because we got a notification that there were high winds over London and that flights were grounded and over 1,300 flights were affected by this. So I sat on the plane in Stuttgart for like two and a half, three hours. They wouldn't pull back and let us go in the airport because we're right on the plane. So we sat there and then finally we flew to London. I got there late in the evening and I was able to get in through immigration because we couldn't continue on. I missed my flight to South Africa. Uh, and so what happened was, um, I was able to get my bag. Most of the people didn't know about it, but 10.30, the baggage handlers at that time in London at Heathrow quit working, so you couldn't get your bag. So I managed to find a guy, told him my bag. He went and got it, and I had my bag, so I had some clothing, a toothbrush and such. I went outside, and I tried to find out from British Airways what the deal was because what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Send to Ronaldo so you can get it at him. No, don't send it to Ronaldo. has to give it to me personally. Give it to me personally, um, unless you're in a place I never go to. Hester, uh, hold on. So what part of the country are you in, Hester? I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, so the British Airways finally handed a letter, just a handful of them. Most people didn't speak English. They were transiting London. They're now stuck. And it said that it would pay um, like 300 pounds or something like that, or 200 pounds. I can't remember. Anyway, I walked. The Intercontinental was just down the gangway from there. I walked in. They had a room. I got a room. It's like 200 and some pounds for the night. I doubt I'd ever get reimbursed, but I stayed overnight. In the morning, I was able to rebook at like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning when the, the, the people came in, rebook my flight to South Africa, and then rebook my flight that was going to Botswana 
once I got to, to South Africa. Anyway, so I did all that, and I wound up going to the World Cup. And then when I came back, instead of flying through South Africa, I flew through Hong Kong on Cathay Pacific and went back to London and back to Stuttgart. So I went to 2011 World Cup. In 2014, I was stationed in Africa. I had business in, oh, you're in Lipopo. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right, Hester. I might not get there. Maybe you can send it to um, somebody for me in Gauteng because I will definitely be in Gauteng next time. Anyway, so um, then in 2014, I had business in Stuttgart, but the Women's World Cup, the final weekend was going on and I wasn't tied up. So I flew from Stuttgart on, um, on Lufthansa, I think it was, to Paris and I went to Marcosi and then I went to also to the Stade uh, Jean Boin in Paris and I saw the Women's Final. Canada was in that against UK, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And then uh, there's women 2014, 2015. I went to England. I had 15 matches all over the country. That was incredible. 2017, I went to Northern Ireland for the Women's World Cup. 2019, I was, oh, excuse me, 2018, I went to San Francisco for the Sevens World Cup. Then 2019, I was in Japan for a month for the World Cup. And then 2022, um, because I had three World Cups, and one was the, the Sevens World Cup was supposed to be in South Africa, and it was. But the Women's World Cup was supposed to be in England in 2021, and the Rugby League was supposed to be in England in 2021. So I wound up going in 2022 to Cape Town for the Sevens World Cup, and then I went to the Rugby League World Cup in the UK, and I missed the Women's World Cup in New Zealand because they didn't relax and exp explain their immigration controls over their COVID scam until three weeks before the World Cup. So I had tickets, but no rental car, no money set aside for that trip because now it was out of sequence and out of my plan. So I've been to every World Cup imaginable including a Rugby League World Cup since 2011, with the exception of the 2021 Women's World Cup played in 2022 in New Zealand. Yeah. And that was weird because they, they the whole thing was a scam, the way they set it up. The the World Rugby screwed the whole thing up. I ordered kit shirts and, you know, pins and, and stuff like that for the Women's Rugby World Cup, and I never got it. Never got it. My order was canceled, um, but I was billed for it. And then they redid the website months later, and then suddenly the stuff came in the mail. I was so angry about that. Yeah, and it was so poorly managed. Um, World Rugby is very ineffective at managing its websites and running its operations. Never mind how poor its officiating has become. So, who is in the chat here? Would miss my bed, says Dylan. Um, what's this? Better give it a personal. What's this? Frame photo of Springbok game. Oh, sorry to hear that. Back to South Africa election gets. Uh, well, that's my plan, but I don't have my passport back yet. Uh, my passport was set to expire on June 17th, and they won't let you in the country idiotically unless you have unless you have a passport that is six months beyond expiration date. They don't let you in the country. That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard of from country, particularly when you go to country repeatedly. I mean, now my passport sits with passport authorities, and I have to wait for it to be processed. So um, hopefully, it will be processed. There was a year wait last year, so that's why I didn't put it in last year. I didn't want to get stuck. Okay, so don't send it to Ronaldo. We'll figure something out. Right. All right, cool beans. All right, I think I have caught up with everybody in the chat now. Anyway, so Rugby World Cup stuff. Pretty cool. Um, I've enjoyed them. Uh, I have to say that the, the best organized ones so far, well, maybe Japan tops New Zealand 2011, but New Zealand 2011 was amazing. But Japan in 20, 2019 was pretty good. England was good in 2015, um, but... It really wasn't a focus. England has a million other things going on, and you know, it's not like the Olympics where they were in London in 2012 and everything was everything at the airport at Heathrow is all Olympics. Barely any mention of the Olymp of the Rugby World Cup was made when I landed at Heathrow. Only one or two signs. Very disappointing, even though it was huge in in the UK. The stadiums were mostly sold out. I went to games in Newcastle, I think, and I went to them in Gloucester, and I went to them in um, London. Manchester, not Manchester, um, what's the other one? Birmingham, I think it was the other one. Went to games all over the country. Um, went to London at at uh, Twickenham, not Twickenham. Um, <clears throat> what's the other one? Uh, Wembley, I went to Wembley, not Twickenham. I went to Wembley. I went to uh, the Olympic Stadium on the east side of London. Uh, I went to, um, during the, um, also went to um, the only games that weren't in England, were actually in Wales, to Cardiff to Millennium Stadium, which is now called something else, Principality Stadium, something like that. I went there to watch New Zealand play a game. And it was against George. I'm trying to remember. I mean, it was Tonga. And I caught a couple games there. That was a nice experience. But the traffic was just horrendous. Oh, my goodness. The traffic trying to get into 
into Cardiff was unbelievable. I've been to Cardiff in the past, but this was epic traffic. So yeah, that was um, interesting experience. But the 2015 was good. But 2019 was just amazing uh, with Shinkansen, the high-speed rail traveling around and being in such a different culture in Japan, a place I know a lot about, but I'd never been before. So it was nice to actually finally go there. Um, yeah, so Japan was incredible. So uh, that's what I can say about that experience. What else we got here? So. I'll ask some Bulls players for a memory. What's this? From okay, cool. Okay. Cape Town was best because I got to see it. Well, Dylan, it was pretty cool. But I mean, but Dylan, I always come to Cape Town. Even even if I go back and I have an abbreviated trip this time, um, I'll get to Cape Town. Even if I spend and if I spend a lot of time in Ho Tang, uh, but I always get to Cape Town. So. Um, Cape Town was the first stop on my trip back in August 2022. I flew in, and that was really cool because the Petsu film crew had a plan, man. And he's like, the, the the Colonel Colonel Kalanded, Kalanded, Kalanded. Yeah, he's like the Colonel's landed, and he just makes it part of the documentary. I'm like, hey, it's a Petsu film crew, oh, <laughs> and that's in the documentary for um, for um, Hood Constantia, which was our documentary that we did. So that's where I started, and then Paulie was down there, and I met with Paulie and, and, and kind of had an informal meet and greet with him. But the first meet and greet was actually in Ho Teng, and Debbie set that up at the um, Emperor's Palace at the Med Court, and we did that one. That was pretty cool. That one had the weather hooligan come to it, and um, all kinds of people came to that. Amy came to that. Uh, lots of people came to that event. That was kind of fun and that's the one where i had bought the cowboy hat that the pet suit or not the pet suit the uh the weather hooligan wanted and i brought the weather hooligans cowboy hat and took it all over the world wearing it and making videos and updating people and then i gave it to him and uh, unfortunately someone stole his hat it is south africa they stole his hat and um i bought the same hat so now whoever the thief is has the same hat that i have <laughs> those cowboy hats are expensive though the one i really wanted the black hat five hundred dollars yeah, that's going to have to wait. I'm going to need a lot of Super Chat money before I can afford that hat. So, Oops, what's going on here? Man, it's getting bright out here. There's the link. There. Thank you, uh, Hendo, for the Hood Constantia. Awesome documentary. I thought so, too. P.E. is better, says uh, Green Fan. Better than what? Cape Town has the best sunset, says Debbie. They do have incredible sunsets. Cape Town's got a lot of stuff. So it's just it's unfortunate you've got the Cape Flats here. Traffic is bad in Cape Town for the next few days. Because two passenger ships docked. Oh, really? But they didn't bring cars, so why would that affect traffic? That's interesting. Anyway, folks, um, it's um, it is. You're right. It's uh, Cape Town is um, it's amazing. Look, I mean, South Africa has amazing stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm look, I'm not really sold on PE. It's just to me, it's just a big town. Uh, Ronaldo loves it, and people who live there love it, and that's great. You should like where you live, if not love where you live, because otherwise, why are you living there? Unless you're forced to for, you know, for for work, you know. So it's good that people care about PE. It's nice. Um, I really need to spend more time in Nisna and spend more time in George. Um, uh, probably I'd love to get back there. I haven't spent much time there. I was boom, boom, in and out of that, which was interesting. Great hospitality there at the uh, at the train when I stayed overnight. That was a lovely experience, one I wasn't expecting. I met the owners of that. They actually live in the States, but they're South Africans, and they were back there. Whoa. Did you hear that? My goodness. <laughs> Arctic says PE's way overrated. Hey Arctic, have you been here the whole time? Do you hear about the uh the uh the plant shutting down in Sassel inland? And so there's only gonna be one refinery, so the hundred and eight thousand barrels of fuel and av gas is gonna be one of the things that there isn't. What the hell is that? That's like a bug that died. You got little flowers coming off cherry trees and blossoms and stuff like that. So Anyway, wow, that was one big gust that came out of nowhere, man. That thing is crazy. So let's see what we got here. In Africa, man, a few of us think... 60 minutes. What's that? few of us think you good. We 67 million here. I don't know what that means, Johan. Well, thank you for sharing. Still by. Um, okay, I've been there. Okay, passengers are using Uber. Oh, that's why. Okay. Thought maybe just when your election money comes in. <laughs> what election money? <laughs> uh, that will be... What will it take for PE Rugby to grade again? Uh, well, 
it's Cape Town is well, South Africa is expensive, more expensive than most South Africans can afford these days. But um, for PE rugby, great. I don't think it's going to happen because PE's not. Look, the problem with South Africa is that who's going to start a professional rugby club in PE after the Southern Kings are gone? I mean, they couldn't make it. Uh, people just didn't go to the games and spend the money. The Bulls have big financial backers. That's why they're okay to take risk. And the crowds have started to come back to Loftus. That if they weren't there before the pandemic and when after the pandemic, they really weren't there. Only recently have they begun to come back. And in no small measure, for two reasons. Number one, uh, three reasons. Number one, because of the rivalry with the Stormers has brought people back and fills the stadium. I've been to games there where it's nearly sold out um, for that rivalry for both Curry Cup and for URC. That's one reason. The second reason is because Jake White is rebuilding a winner. And the third reason is because they're just incredibly talented players on the Bulls squad. I mean, you've got you've got Kurtley Arnse, you've got Keenan Moody on that team, you've got um, some amazing players, uh, Robila, and um, you know you also got players you never expected to see on there that are playing for the Bulls now, and they're just a, it's an amazing squad. So people come out to see the talent, particularly the exciting speedsters. People are coming out to see. The Bulls, because Jake White has got them winning again, and they're coming out because of the competition. So so the Bulls make money. The Durban side is really sad. The team is backed by a South African who lives in America, has made a ton of money, and they are injecting and infusing that team with money, buying talent. Now, see, Khalees is no longer there, but they're buying talent. But the talent hadn't been paying off. They had a terrible season, but now they've turned it around, and the crowds have started to come back because they're turning it around. Uh, Cape Town draws big crowds, but I mean, big crowds but not big enough because they're in a cavernous stadium they should be playing at newlands what in a what a it's strange and stupid shameful money-grubbing decision made by the western cape rugby union to abandon newlands to try to sell it and make money off of it when it should be the place that they're playing rugby with sold out crowds it's really sad look i'll be honest when i go to cape town it's much easier to catch rugby at greenpoint stadium um dhl greenpoint stadium much easier hotels are there it's walking distance for a lot of things. It's walking distance from the Inner Harbor there, from the Victorian Alfred waterfront. Uh, but Newlands is where they should be playing rugby, and it's all been betrayed. It's really a shame, shame, shame. But this is the state of rugby. Mark Alexander for Saru um, really needs a wake-up call for South African rugby. But no one's going to put a commercial team into Port Elizabeth because the fan base won't support it. They didn't support the Southern Kings. Even if they win, they won't support it. So uh, there's other places where a professional rugby franchise can go. Um, but um, right now, it's not happening. Not happening. So P's not going to see it anytime soon. Stuck down south for a week. Why is that? Okay. Now they're asking if you flew over me because a, a, a business jet flew over, and I'm like, that might be Arctic. <laughs> it was yesterday or the day before, whatever it was. What's this? All the volleys and the banana boys and girls moving there. <laughs> More people to go to the strip club and pee than the rugby. Exactly. Yohan Vista says, Africa's for Africa belongs to Africa. Well, that sentence doesn't make any sense. Africa is not a homo sapien. It's not a sentient being. Africa doesn't belong to Africa. Africa is simply the name of the geographic destination occupied by all kinds of people. Asian origin, European origin, African origin, mixed race from all of them, full of all kinds of faiths. So... You know, I remember that people in the U.S. State Department and the U.S. military were fond of a phrase, a trite phrase for years when I was floating around Africa going, African solutions for African problems. Well, if Africa had solutions to African problems, they wouldn't have all these problems. If the Africans had solutions to their problems, they wouldn't have endemic poverty, infectious disease rampant, incomplete infrastructure, horrible economies, oligarchies, monopolies. And corrupt political systems. Oh, but you don't understand. It's colonialism, colonialism, racism is responsible for it. Well, you know what? Singapore was colonized and it's one of the most robust countries in the world, economically and politically. South Korea was colonized by the Japanese and it's one of the most prosperous countries in the world. The list goes on and on of the Asian tigers. The Taiwanese escaped the Kuomintang escaped from mainland China and the communists winning. They went to Formosa and they founded Taiwan, one of the most advanced and successful in high-tech economies on the planet. All colonized and successful. So the whining, the hand-wringing, the blaming of racism and colonialism needs to stop. And people need to start taking 
actions for their own agency. This country was colonized and we're the most wealthy, successful, and generous country in the history of humankind. When we were colonized, that's right. So people need to stop their whining and start getting off their backside and do something and make something happen. South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa running around the planet going, vaccine apartheid, vaccine apartheid, vaccine apartheid. Oh, we're going to be experimented on because we're black people and the big people have all... The white people have all the power. What a monarch, load of malarkey. That is just total crap. Total crap. Everyone else has seemed to have done fine. Costa Rica, colonized by the Spanish. Very successful country. Wow. Brazil, colonized by Europeans. One of the most successful and largest companies, countries in the world. Argentina, once upon a time, colonized by Europeans of all different origins. Germans, Argentinian, excuse me, Italians, Spanish. But at one time was the fourth wealthiest country in the world in the last century. Ruined by totalitarian fascist governments. Stop blaming others for your failures and start taking responsibility. You have agency. That's right. Use the advantage presented to you. South Africa has had, had functional, good universities that had well-trained people who actually could do things. That's not the case anymore. It had that destroyed. It had a functioning infrastructure of roads, ports, highways, bridges, electrical plants, refineries, all destroyed by the ANC. South Africa has a wealth of agricultural resource, even though only 12% of the land is arable, or 13% wealth of mineral resources and space for people and tons of human capital and it's all been pissed down the drain by a corrupt kleptocracy known as the African National Congress. Stop blaming others for your failures. Take responsibility. Stop acting as if you have no agency. That's the bottom line here, folks. That's what needs to happen. All right, so. Sir was paid billions to push the jab. Yep. Yep. Rama, full call is useless. <laughs> nice suit and tie, man. You shave the beard, bro. Uh, Johan, uh, why do you want me to shave the beard? Uh, the tribalism way before colonialism has always been the cause of challenges undeveloped. Yes, Menage Kwa, you're correct. I'm white and I'm African because I was born African. You are correct, Erica. You are. Botswana isn't too bad. Uh, Green Phantom Botswana was fine until Eric Mokwetsi, Eric Mosisi, and his band of thieves took over Botswana. And now it's slipping down the slope. They used the lockdown to oppress Botswana unjustly forcing people to have zones where they could travel. They can't just go from Habaroni to Francistown or to Slibi Pique or Ramotswa to the south. They can't do that unless they had a pass. And the pass was handed out to people who were part of the political elite. Others were screwed, businesses collapsed, and Botswana were pushed into poverty by a capricious, unjust political system. The Botswana the Democratic Party has betrayed the voters of Botswana, and I hope they are tossed out. I hope they're tossed out. And whatever party that Ian Kama is supporting, I hope that party comes to power. It certainly won't be, you know, Salashando, uh, Dumalang Salashando's party because he's just simply a whiner. That guy just complains about everything, BCP or whatever party he's involved with now. So it was code for we don't give a crap. Yep. Uh, Africans, no solutions. Harlequins and Parks games and PE are good. Okay, thank you for sharing that, Org. No historic places are being tanked for political clout. Okay. All right, I think I've caught up again. Let me see if there's anything at the end here before we wrap up. Nope, that's it. All right, folks, um, we're at about an hour and 23 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. We had a huge audience. It's pretty good. We hit up 170 plus at one point, probably because I talked about Cyril Ramaphosa. And not Cyril Ramaphosa. I talked about Jacob Zuma, excuse me, and um, MK. And that was cool. So I'm glad people tuned, tuned in. Obviously, the title got people to come in. It wasn't clickbait. We actually talked about it. 98 likes. There's 102 people here. Wow, I thought we would have had 100 already. Thank you all so much. Have a good day. I've got to go back in, wrap up here now. And then once I wrap up, i got physical therapy. I get physical therapy. I'll head home briefly. And if it's not pouring rain, I'll be off of the campaign trail again today. I may do a game tomorrow in the Champions Cup or the Challenge Cup. I don't know. I have to check the schedule. The Stormers are out of it because they lost to La Rochelle. It's unfortunate. They should have beaten them, but they're done. Uh, but the Sharks have done very well. They won four of their five contests, and they have advanced now. So the Cheetahs are out. The Stormers are out. I think the Bulls are still in. Is that correct? Yeah. So the Bulls and the Sharks are still in there. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. Thank you all so much. Be sure to hit the like button if you don't mind. We just hit 100 and I'll catch you all later on. Please check out my shorts talking about these issues I mentioned earlier. And thank you all so much. Uh, God bless. Thank you, Christine. I thought it was a great show too. And we'll catch you all later on. God bless and have a good day, folks. Cheers. Thank you so much for your support. Hit the like button.
Feel free to leave a super chat if you want. <laughs> there you go. 